This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. If you are a longtime listener here of Covering the Spread or the Solo Shot, you know I'm t- I tend to be pretty conservative when it comes to same game parlays, parlays in general, because I like to have the ability to cash that individual ticket by itself. But for Tuesday, when we've got 30 teams in action, I actually have a couple same game parlays I like for tonight over at FanDuel Sportsbook for MLB action. They are parlays that play well together, where if one leg cashes, it increases the odds the other ones go through as well. I think they do mesh pretty well. So we're going to break down my favorite bets across uh, MLB for this Tuesday outline, where I see value, whether it be money lines, totals, a couple of strikeout props in there as well, and two same game parlays I like for tonight at FanDuel Sportsbook, then we'll talk through my Dinger Tuesday picks as well. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research, here to break down Tuesday's MLB action over at FanDuel Sportsbook and let you know where I see value for today. We'll dive into all that here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. On yesterday's show, we had Tom Vecchio on to break down the NBA play-in tournament. So talked about tonight's games, talked about futures markets, and much more that Tom likes. If you want some thoughts on tonight's NBA play-in games, check that out on the Covering the Spread podcast. Tomorrow, Connor Allen will join us talking NFL draft betting. Should be a fun show there as well so search for covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts hit subscribe and if you like what you hear leave us a five star rating as well dingers blasts moonshots whatever you want to call them everyone loves home runs and with FanDuel's dinger tuesdays you can love them even more that's right dinger tuesdays are back for another season on america's number one sports book just bet on any player to hit a home run and FanDuel will give you five dollars in bonus bets for every home run hit during that game as if you needed another reason to love the long ball. Make every moment more. FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball, must be 21 plus and present in select states. Bonus issued is now a trouble bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max bonus $25 per game. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Vermont, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-777. Seven or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9 with it in Indiana. 1-800-522-4700. Visit chaosgamblinghealth.com in Kansas. 1-877- 770 stop in Louisiana. Visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1 800 gambler.net in West Virginia, 1 800 522 4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gambling helpline ma.org or call you under 327 5050 for 24 7 support in Massachusetts or call 1 877 Hope and Y or text Hope and Y in New York. Now, before we talk about those two SGPs, I like for tonight, I did want to give you my two favorite Dinger Tuesday bets over at FanDuel Sportsbook in the spirit of Dinger Tuesday. Did go through those in the solo shop, but don't want to make all of you listen to both podcasts in order to get your Dinger Tuesday thoughts for today. So the first one, as far as the first game of the night, it's going to be the Phillies and uh, the Rockies. Do like Alec Bohm, shortened a bit to plus 540 since we talked over on the solo shot. Still okay with that. Uh, you know, some trepidation because Bohm hasn't hit the ball that well so far this year, not putting the ball in the air, not making great contact. But it has been getting a bit better of late. Facing a lefty in Austin Gomber, Bohm a much better power hitter against lefties than he is against righties. So I will not go to Bohm against a righty unless it's a very generous number. Against the lefty, I will. Uh, 25 plate appearances against lefties. Not a huge sample so far this year, but in general, very good against lefties. So I like Bohm plus 540 in this game. It also does not hurt that for the Dinger Tuesday uh, recommendation, you get Bonus bets back based on the overall numbers of home runs hurt hit during the game. You see, you get JT Real Muto, Bryce Harper, uh, 
Nick Castellanos, if we're wishing for unfortunate events in the world, apparently, you know, he's there too. So there are other guys who can go deep in this game, even if uh, Bohm himself does not go deep. So helps for Dinger Tuesday there. Other one I like is on Kyle Tucker in the Braves versus Astros game. It's a pretty fun game on both sides, which again does help for the Dinger Tuesday thoughts. Kyle Tucker right now at FanDuel Sportsbook is 4-1, to one, so it's still the same number as earlier on today. Tucker hitting the ball really well so far this year. It's expected Woba is sky high, around 460. So he's hitting the ball well. 15% barrel rate, always hits her power against righties and lefties too, honestly. Not the best part for home runs for lefties. Uh, it's about neutral, despite what Jordan Alvarez does. It is about neutral. But again, you could benefit should Alvarez go deep as well. They're facing Ronaldo Lopez, lets up a lot of fly balls. Hunter Brown on the other side lets up some, some hard contact too. So similar to the Bohm thoughts, I like both sides of this game. I like the individual a lot with Kyle Tucker based on the way he's hitting the ball. I like the matchup against Lopez. So uh, if you want my two Dinger Tuesday bets for today, Alec Bohm plus 540 and Kyle Tucker 4-1 to one over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Let's talk about some same game parlays I like for tonight now. And let's begin with a pretty fun game between the Yankees and the Blue Jays. Right now at FanDuel Sportsbook, the Blue Jays money line is plus 102. And that'll be the first leg of this same game parlay as they take on the Yankees here today. I've actually got the Yank the Blue Jays as the team that would be favored if this game were played on a neutral park. And it's actually in Toronto for tonight. So bit of a bump there as well. And they're throwing Yusei Kikuchi, who has been really good over an expandingly large sample for a while now. 24 start sample on Kikuchi throwing fewer curveball or with throwing more curveballs. And he has a 3.52 skill interactive ERA in that time with a 29% strikeout rate. Kikuchi in the past had issues with walks and hard contact, but those issues are not gone in the sample, but they're definitely a lot better than what they were before. Kikuchi's had stretches before where his underlying data has been good, but the results were not good. But that's not the case here. His ERA is actually better than his skill interactive ERA. It sits at 3.40. So he's had good outings for a long time. It is tough to be a lefty against the Yankees, but I think Kikuchi's got the stuff to get the job done here. The Blue Jays facing Carlos Rodon. Okay, start to the season so far with good results, but walking a few too many guys, not getting enough strikeouts, and that does include a start against the Marlins, who are a pretty soft matchup, so that might juice his numbers a bit too. The Jays have a 117 at WRC plus against lefties on their current active roster since the start of last year. Not hitting for a lot of power, but really good play discipline numbers, so they're the best value on the board for me. So within the same game parlay, the first leg will be the Jays money line at plus 102. Don't mind if you want to go that by itself. But I think that is a key building block here of the same game parlay is liking the Jays money line at plus 102. I talked in that about how the Jays are pretty good with plate discipline. And that plays into the second leg of this same game parlay, which is going to be the under on Rodon strikeout prop under four and a half is plus 122 right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Again, the thought process here, walking a few too many guys, not getting a ton of strikeouts right now and did benefit from that matchup with the Marlins. So Rodon, just not really seeing it right now, him being the pitcher that he was previously, and in the two, the three starts so far for Radon has gone over four and a half strikeouts just once. And that was in the matchup with the Marlins over a larger sample. Rodon did have some spike starts towards the end of last year, 10 strikeouts against the Pirates. He had nine against the Red Sox as well. But I mean, just overall hasn't been the same strikeout pitcher he was before all the injuries, 22% strikeout rate last year, 19% this year, 10.7% swinging strike rate. So he hasn't been the same strikeout pitcher and he's facing a Jays lineup that again has pretty good play discipline. So I feel like I might be a bit low here. I do have Rodon strikeout projection at 4.28. Maybe that's pessimistic, but again, he's on the road, tough matchup as far as strikeouts go and hasn't been getting strikeouts for a bit. Now, if you pair the Rodon under with the Jays money line, Gets you to plus 262 on that same game, same game parlay at FanDuel Sportsbook. So they do know that, again, these bets are correlated because if Rodon goes under, that increases the odds the Jays win this game. So they know that these two bets are correlated. But 
Still think that's a good value there. So I'll take uh, the Jays money line plus 262, the Rodon strikeout under at four and a half. Uh, and you put those two together, or the Jays money line plus 102 against you the same game parlay at plus 262 over at FanDuel Sports. But that'll be the first one that we like for today. The second same game parlay takes us out to the other New York team. It's the Pirates and the Mets. And again, similar thought process here where the founding, the foundation of this bet is a money line. That's a Pirates money line. They're a plus one of six taking on the Mets for today. I've actually got the Pirates as slight favorites in this game. Maybe that's a bit too much confidence in Jared Jones, but like, my goodness, does this guy look good so far? It's a very small sample of three starts, but He's got a 2.25 skill interactive ERA, 3.40 expected ERA. So he's cooking and I expect regression there. I do not have that as like the baseline expectation for Jared Jones within my numbers, but looking pretty good so far facing off with a Mets team that has a 95 WRC plus against righties on the current active roster since the start of last year. Other side of this is Jose Quintana. Uh, Quintana, I think his strikeout props a bit high. So I want to go with the under on that. Under five and a half strikeouts for Quintana is minus 118. And again, uh, just not seeing a ton of strikeouts from Quintana right now. And he's facing off against the Pirates. Uh, they will strike out 24.3% strikeout rate on their current active roster since the start of last year against lefties. But again, Keaton just not a big strikeout guy. He's made three starts so far this year. He's had four strikeouts in all three of those games. Granted, one of those was against Atlanta, so a very tough matchup. Uh, but he does get to go home for today. Only one of those starts has been at home. But over a larger sample, Quintana just not really a big strikeout guy. We have a 16 start sample on Quintana since the start of last year. And he has gone over four and a half strikeouts in just seven of those 16 games, or sorry, over five and a half strikeouts, which is number for tonight, just two of those 16 games. So pretty lofty number. The Pirates will strike out and Quintana is stretched out at this point. So I understand it to an extent, but it does feel pretty lofty. So the uh, Pirates money line of plus one to six paired with the Quintana under is uh, plus a uh, 216 at FanDuel Sportsbook, but I actually think there's value in the over in this game as well. Total is just seven and a half, which is low for a reason. Again, neither offense truly light th lights things up. I do like Jared Jones, but again, not as high on Quintana as I am on some as, as the market seems to be. So all these bets play together because they kind of play off the fact that Quintana I think it's a bit overrated by the market right now. That does drive why I like the over, does drive why I like the under on a strikeout prop, and does drive why I like the Pirates' money line. So it's one assumption that goes into three separate bets. And if you parlay those together, it's 4-1 to one at FanDuel Sportsbook. Again, they know that these bets are correlated, so you are paying a tax. But I think they all make sense individually, which is kind of what I want for a same-game parlay. And if... One of them hits that increases the odds. The other hits the others hit as well. So pirates money line Quintana under five and a half strikeouts and over seven and a half total runs. That's four to one right now. FanDuel Sportsbook. So those are the two same game parlays I am liking for this Tuesday over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Did have a couple other spots where I was seeing value and wanted to touch on them here before we closed up shop for today. Let's finish up with the third money line I like for tonight, and that's on the Red Sox. The Red Sox money line right now against the Guardians is minus 110. I think that's a bit of a value with where things currently sit. And it's it's it all stems from Garrett Whitlock. And the question is, has Whitlock figured things out? Because hasn't been able to stick in the rotation previously. And it's a three-star sample this year, but Looked pretty good with a 1.26 ERA, a 4.25 expected ERA. And that's pretty good for a guy who's trying to stick in the rotation for a long time in the first time in his career. But Whitlock has been a good pitcher in the bullpen, so it shouldn't be a huge shock. And there's been some tweaks to his repertoire this year. He also had some bad luck last year. If you look at his ERA, it was pretty high, but that was much worse than what you would expect it based on his underlying numbers. Now, Whitlock is not getting a ton of whiffs, and the Guardians do not strike out. So we're probably going to see a lot of balls in play. But Whitlock's batted ball numbers are pretty good so far this year. So I think that Whitlock should be successful. 
Facing off against Tanner Bybee, he has a 4.19, a skill interactive ERA uh, last year, 4.48 this year. Well, that's some too much hard contact. So that's why I'm okay going to the Red Sox here. It does bother me to uh, target the Red Sox, given how bad their defense is. I have been on this train before, and it's not been fun. In fact, I had to like tweak part of my model to account for how bad this defense is, because defense does matter quite a bit. So that makes me uncomfortable. Not super jazzed about going at them again, but I do think there is value here. So we'll take the Red Sox money line at minus 110. Final bet I like for tonight is a total. That's in the Giants versus the Marlins game. Under eight and a half runs is minus 105. Kind of surprised this number is where it is. Now, I kind of get it because like the two starters here are Jordan Hicks and Ryan Weathers. Hicks is a guy who's been a reliever for a while, trying to stick as a starter. And Weathers is someone who got beat up when he was starting last year. So that's probably why this number is so high, but I think it's a bit too big. Hicks has been awesome in his three starts this year with a 3.74 skill interactive ERA. He's not walking guys doing a good job of limiting hard contact. Now he gets to face the Marlins. We have a 91 WRC plus against righties with a 149 ISO, which is not a great recipe for offense. I don't know yet if Jordan Hicks will be able to make this stick for an entire season, but I'm intrigued. I will say that for sure. I'm at least intrigued by what Hicks has done so far. I'm a bit more skeptical of Weathers because he has a 2.457 ERA, but his expected ERA is 6.19. He does get to pitch in Miami. Uh, the Giants offense not going to blow you away against lefties. They're okay, but they're not going to blow you away. So I have a total 8.26 runs under is minus 105. So I think there is value there. So I will take the under on eight and a half runs for this Marlins versus Giants game as my final bet of the day. So recommendations for me across uh, this Tuesday. I like the Kyle Tucker home run prop four to one Alec Bohm plus 540. And then the bets from this show for today, the Marlins and Giants under eight and a half at minus 105. I like the Red Sox money line at minus 110. The same game parlay of the Pirates money line, Jose Quintana under five and a half strikeouts and uh, the over seven and a half runs at minus 110. Those parlay together is four to one. And then the other one was the Rodon strikeout under paired with the Jays money line. Uh, that one was in the 260 range. Let me check on the number on that. Uh, once again for Rodon and that one was yeah plus 262 for the Rodon strikeout under and the Jays money line for tonight that's all we got here for today on covering the spread as mentioned we are back with you once again tomorrow talking some NFL draft with Connor Allen should be a fun show as we get for the set for the draft just eight days from tomorrow to make sure you get that as it is posted subscribe to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast you want some more and there'll be thoughts for tonight talk some more strikeout props that's over on the solo shot you can find that by subscribing to the FanDuel research podcast feed if you've got any questions for me i am on twitter at jim sonis you can also follow FanDuel research on twitter at FanDuel research want to thank you all for tuning in for today good luck to you with your bets across baseball we'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down the nfl draft this has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel podcast network